next speaker, uh, Mr. Everhard Scheuer. Hello, Mr. Everhard. Nice to meet you. Hi, good morning. Okay, so Mr. Everhard is a of uh, the Health Foundation. Am I right? That's correct. Yeah, and so the topic of Mr. Everhart's speech, of Mr. Schwer's speech, is the healthcare and blockchain a perfect match. So, um, Mr. Schwer, I'm giving you the word. First of all, good morning to Kiev. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sitting here in Zurich, uh, representing uh, the Health Foundation uh, out of Zug, uh, and we have just recently be named, uh, renamed from HIT Foundation to DF Foundation, just to avoid any confusion. So I'm going to talk about healthcare um, and blockchain. And uh, we think that Switzerland is a perfectly suited place for that, because as you know, uh, Switzerland is the home of a lot of uh, organizations around healthcare, the WHO, the Red Cross, and large pharma companies. It's also the second most expensive healthcare system in the world after the US. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's just the way it is. And it's home to a lot of companies in healthcare, but it's also home to a lot of companies in the blockchain space. That's what we already heard. And in February this year, uh, combined Liechtenstein which is right next to Switzerland and Switzerland, they have combined 960 companies or foundations, which is one of the usual uh, legal entity forms that are used to incorporate uh, crypto or blockchain um, endeavors. So one of the most famous is Ethereum, of course, then you have Cardano, Polkadot, Tezos, and the list just goes on and on. But maybe, People who are not so blockchain savvy think of Switzerland and healthcare and blocks um, in a different way, which is uh, more like this. Um, it's also Switzerland known for a lot of good chocolate. And so this is also something that has to do with blocks in healthcare. Anyway, so, but if we look at healthcare and blockchain, um, that just recently has been a, a meta study about the commercial success of healthcare endeavors in the blockchain space. And of course, they looked at coin market cap, which is uh, the place where only projects with a public blockchain and a token uh, show up. And uh, it's kind of um, very, um, frustrating to see that most of the companies are basically um, have stopped operations uh, or uh, have uh, wasted the investors' money almost completely. So like medical chain and patientory, the return on investment is just below 1%. So this is not a very uh, successful story. Uh, and that's also why a lot of uh, healthcare uh, projects on blockchain have been built on consortium chains like uh, Hyperledger or Quorum. And uh, one of the examples is PharmaLedger, which is quite hyped by quite a lot of partners. But in the end, it's a lot of um, uh, project planning, it's moving slow because all the partners have to agree on a certain direction and what they want to implement. And despite the long list of partners, not much has come out of that uh, project uh, within the last two and a half years. So that's why I'm uh, kind of glad that we have been able to um, implement uh, real use cases. Um, a little bit uh, below the horizon and the radar. And some of them are actually uh, happening in Ukraine. Uh, and I guess that's also why I've been asked to present today. So we're basically having four um, ongoing projects in the area of healthcare, which is one, our first one was uh, with the National Lung Hospital in uh, Vietnam, uh, where people actually, when they report their uh, treatment, uh, and symptoms, how the medications work, um, 
they get uh, they can collect points, digital health points, which they then can use to redeem uh, certain services in the healthcare system. And that is uh, being done in order to increase the treatment adherence of the patients, uh, which is very important in the context of tuberculosis and taking antibiotics. So this is what was our first project, it's still ongoing. And then we have um, one project in Ukraine together with uh, the National Registry for Hemophilia Patients, uh, which I'm in a minute talking a little bit more about it. And this is also in the same alley of um, treatment monitoring and in exchange for tokens. And then we have a project together with the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute. It's in Mali and Ivory Coast. It's tracking rabies vaccines uh, from uh, Switzerland until the uh, distribution to the patients. So they are tracked on blockchain. And one of the more recent projects is uh, also in Ukraine, um, health certificates on blockchain for PCR test results. So I'm going to elaborate a little on those two projects in Ukraine. Um, this is the one with hemophilia patients. And if you look at the upper right corner, uh, what we use blockchain for is there is a request from somebody who wants data, in that case, the National Registry. They want to have a better understanding of the symptoms people are having. So um, they are basically the sponsor of that um, um, research together with the company Roche, Ukraine. And uh, then the National Registry posts a request for information on the blockchain. And uh, at the same time, all the hemophilia patients in Ukraine are asked to download the app. If they want to participate, they get a QR code. And by scanning the QR code, they can download the app, which is called Sintiva Health. And then they are already assigned to a cohort of um, hemophilia patients, which is important because uh, instead of putting the data uh, centrally in a database, what we do is it's a decentralized registry. So uh, the app all constantly reads the blockchain for new um, uh, questionnaires that the patient can fill out. Uh, so uh, the registry uh, doesn't know uh, the real identity of the, uh, of the person. Uh, and this is also uh, a feature of blockchain where uh, the identity of the people can be protected, the privacy. So the app constantly reads the blockchain and then if there is a new questionnaire the, which the patient is eligible for, the patient of course has the choice to accept or deny. If they deny it, nothing um, it stops here. If they accept it, they can they are guided to an um, outside data bank that's run by the um, patient registry, where they have to consent and then provide uh, weekly bleeding rates, how they feel, and so on. Uh, and once they send it, um, then they automatically get uh, rewarded with, with DHP, the digital health points, um, uh, which they then can use to redeem certain services that are predefined uh, that are health related. So this is basically how it looks. They download the app, there are some basic questions, age, uh, gender, and so on. And then they scan the QR code, which is presented by the doctor or the clinic, uh, when they agree to participate in that study. So th through that, they are actually uh, assigned to a study cohort. And then they only get, you see that on the left side, the surveys that are relevant for them. Because of course, in the whole population, in that uh, Sintiva um, ecosystem, um, there are a lot of um, uh, questionnaires uh, that are uh, posted on blockchain uh, for different um, users. So, but you, uh, if you're assigned to a cohort, you only get those who are relevant for you. And then you see in the middle the questionnaire. And this is important. This is not data that's being collected. Uh, in the app and stored by us who are running the app. This goes directly 
onto the data bank of the registry because we don't want to deal with data, which sounds funny, but uh, we don't want to be the custodian of data at all because it comes with a lot of regulatory uh, restrictions and problems, to be honest. So, and once they um, fill out those questions, send it they automatically in the wallet, which is associated or built into the, the app, they receive a cryptocurrency, which here it's called HIT, but now it's called uh, DHP, uh, digital health points, but it can also be uh, different uh, points or loyalty points, so to speak, um, uh, that can operate in that app. So, and then the last um, step is once you've collected uh, a certain number of, of tokens, DHPs, then you can use those to redeem certain services or in the future uh, discounts on uh, certain medication and treatments. That's the whole vision of it. That um, that's actually how we started out that we wanted to give the patients data value because nowadays everybody is using um, patients data without first of all telling them very often uh, that the data is being used and second uh, they're not sharing the monetization of those data with the, um, the creator of the data, the patient. So this is where we actually uh, started in the first place to give um, the patients an opportunity to earn um, some value with their data and also uh, being able to decide who's going to uh, use the data. So this is one of the use cases um, and the second one that we are uh, that we have implemented in Ukraine that's actually with the employees of the company Roche in Ukraine because uh, middle of last year when the first wave or already the second wave started uh, hit the countries in Europe, they were saying, okay, everybody who wants to come into the office, they have to show the, their health status. And then we created together with the lab an interface where the lab directly can create a digital twin on the blockchain of the test result. It doesn't contain um, the actual result itself. It's just a test ID. So um, that what happens is that the validity of the test or the, can be proven by anybody uh, outside of the system via blockchain. And I'll show you just in a second how that works. And this is basically, it consists of two components. Uh, one is a registry, which is based on the blockchain, or the list of the existing tests that have been um, uh, conducted or i.e. The, their, uh, their hash uh, for verification. And the second component is the health pass, which is an app uh, that can actually uh, show uh, the QR code of the test, which is um, the test results saved on the patient or the people's phone. And only what, once you go to an um, entry control or want to enter um, an airport, for example, then uh, whoever scans the QR code refers to the, uh, the registry for uh, verification of the test result. And this is basically more or less how uh, all the blockchain-based solutions that are out there uh, work currently. Um, so it's um, upper right, uh, somebody generates an attestation um, that you either have been vaccinated or uh, have a certain test result. And then um, this is um, the, the, the proof um, of existence goes on the blockchain, um, but it doesn't contain any personal identifiable information. Then the person receives a, a QR code, either print out, or you directly can take it from um, a, an iPad or a, a smartphone that's being presented to you, where the QR code is uh, uh, displayed. 
And then you can add that uh, certificate to your app. Uh, this is the same principle that's being applied in the uh, Apple Wallet, for example, if you uh, add um, an airline ticket uh, to it. So, and once um, you want to enter a restricted place, you show that certificate and a third party uh, who controls the entry uh, to that when you scans this QR code and then uh, can verify, as I said already on the blockchain, um, if that's uh, um, tampered with or if it's a valid result. And then the person is granted access or denied access. And the, in our case, we're also working on that whatever is in the app can later on be um, exchanged um, with existing health records, the file format, for example. Okay, so these are the two use cases that we implemented in Ukraine. They're still running. Um, and actually, the, the use case with patients, we are adding um, different indications and also adding different countries at the moment to that. But the learning of of that was that really uh, it needs um, blockchain um, is something which is being used in healthcare right now, but no of the existing blockchains are really suited for healthcare per se. You can do a lot of things with smart contract blockchains with the modern like Cardano or Tezos. Uh, but certainly people have stopped building um, use cases on Ethereum, and that's mainly due to the, uh, due to the gas fees. But there are certain components that for us are very important that are needed uh, in order to have a blockchain uh, where uh, healthcare cases can be executed easily. And this is why we built um, certain components um, uh, for the ecosystem. And certainly um, identity is very important and you have that already with the key pair, um, with the wallet ID. Uh, what's also important is uh, a patient controlled data repository, which is linked uh, to the blockchain and where the patient or the user can actually grant access to that repository um and uh, also withdraw the access to it and then the wallet because a lot of um, processes in healthcare are around payment processes and incentives then the certificates uh, the tracking and everything has to be traceable and auditable in healthcare and also in finance and last but not least digital contracts for example in the context of insurance health insurance are very important so these are the components that we identified in the last two years that are important uh, in order to make blockchain work for healthcare and all the green ones we already implemented in our uh, dHealth network, which is running since uh, the Genesis block was laid uh, March 29th. Um, we currently have a uh, couple of very renowned partners uh, among those are company Roche and also the University of Zurich Blockchain Center uh, who are running uh, the nodes of our independent network. It's important to understand that the health network is a first layer blockchain. We're not operating on any other blockchain. So um, if you want, you can also play around with it. You can download the wallet from our website. And uh, yeah, this is uh, where you can find, find us and how you can contact us and get more information, for example, running uh, a super node of the network or how you can build your projects um, on it. Okay, so this was it.